Hey everyone, Loco here. In this video, I'm gonna be discussing some more tips and shortcuts that you can use to get through the campaign more quickly. I've got another video with more shortcuts and tips. You can either watch that one before or after this one. It doesn't really matter, but make sure to watch the other one because there's a ton of really useful ones in that one. Anyway, with that being said, let's get going. First tip, in the ship graveyard, if you find the ship graveyard cave before you find Mervale's caverns, make sure to, instead of going straight in and completing that, then killing fair graves, what you can do is drop a portal, then continue your way up to Mervale's caverns, the cavern of wrath rather. Once you're in here, grab the waypoint, go back to town, go through that waypoint, and then clear the ship graveyard cave. After doing this, you can kill Fairgraves and then take the waypoint that you get at the start of the area. Kill Fairgraves, take that waypoint, and then you can go straight back into the Cavern of Wrath. Otherwise, what you're gonna do is get this, clear it, pop out somewhere here, kill Fairgraves, and have to run all the way back. I've explained the portal drop in my previous video. If you haven't watched that, that's why I'm explaining it. There's a few other portal drops in this video. I'm not gonna explain why they're good. I'm just gonna show them to you. But that's it for Act 1. I lied, there's actually one more thing in Act 1. What you want to know is that Smoke Mine and Flame Dash or Dash or Frost Blink, if you use these two together, you can actually go a lot faster. So if you just use Flame Dash, it plays the whole animation. So there's that delay, you saw it, it goes Flame Dash, stop, Flame Dash, stop. But if you use Smoke Mine and Flame Dash, it kind of skips that middle animation. So you can do this. Then there's none of that delay that you see when you just go flame dash. Smoke mine plus flame dash, all the pros use it and you should start using it too. Another thing I failed to mention in my last video is that in the riverways to find Oaks area, just opposite the waypoint, there's gonna be this break in the road with these two little pillars, outposts, I don't know what you call them. Just beyond that, there's gonna be this broken road that you can follow, that'll lead you straight to the wetlands. In Act 3, the Imperial Gardens, this is not a completely set layout, but things spawn in sort of the same area. So first things first, you want to get to the middle where you find the waypoint. So you'll come in around here, looking at the minimap, you'll spawn in around here, you'll probably go like that way, then come up and find the waypoint. Then to the left of the waypoint, up and left, you're always going to find the library up here. In the top leftmost corner, you're going to find the Trial of Ascendancy, very important to do that. And then you're going to find the route to Dominus. Normally, it's actually sort of more to the left. But in this case, it spawned directly in line with the waypoint. This is not as common. I actually haven't seen this before. But of course, while making the video, it spawned here. But normally, I'll kind of go a bit up and left. And it spawns normally around there. So just remember, library, trial, Dominus. That's it. In the Sepher of God, you're going to find the entrances and exits always in one of the corners. Now, I know this is sort of circular and circles don't have corners, but as you can see on the mini map, I come in over here and the exit is going to be in this corner or this quadrant, I suppose. It's never going to spawn over here in the middle or like in the middle here. So when you're in the Sepher of God, always aim for the corners and you should find your way out pretty quickly. In the mines, there's not really a foolproof method to get through this area, but generally the exit is going to spawn at the top left. So if you follow these train tracks, always heading up and to the left in this direction, you should find the exit pretty quickly. Don't go down weird pathways. Sometimes it will split off. Like I said, not a foolproof method, but generally follow the tracks in this direction and you should make it to the level two. In the Mines Level 2, you're going to want to complete the Deshret Spirit Quest. That gives you a passive point and two respect points. So make sure to complete that before you leave this area. However, if you find the route to the Crystal Veins before you find Deshret Spirit, don't backtrack and try and find it and then come back all this way. Instead, we're going to do the portal drop technique. Drop this portal, continue to the Crystal Veins, get that waypoint, then come through this portal and complete the quest then when you're done with that, go back to town and continue your way on through the crystal veins. 
Never get lost in the reliquary ever again with this one small tip. So, for this quest, it gives you a passive point as a reward. You're always going to find the cases in the corners. So there's going to be one in this corner, there's going to be one in this corner, and there's going to be one in this corner. Don't worry about going through the middle, just follow the edge, get this one, follow the edge, get this one, follow the edge, get that one, then teleport out to the ossuary waypoint and continue on your merry way. Once again, in the riverways, act six. If you just follow this break in the road, it's going to lead you straight to the next area where you're going to kill Rislatha for the passive point. Make sure to do this on your way. Don't do it after you've made it to maps. It just saves a lot of time. And once you're in the wetlands, just hug this left wall. It'll lead you straight to the entrance of the boss room. Yay! Spawning ground. Similarly, with the Brian King's Reef, this is quite a large area, but if you just hug this wall, this left wall, you'll find the entrance to the boss very, very quickly. There we go. It's a very big area. I could have very easily gone in the middle and got lost over here and run around here for a bit. But instead I just went, wee right around the edge and here's the entrance to the Brian King's throne. The Vile City, I hate this area. I'm not completely convinced by this, but this method sometimes works. You see there's these thick walls, right? There's these thin walls like this, these narrow ones that you can run on either side, and then there's these nice thick ones with plants growing out of the top. If you kind of follow the path of these thick walls, it's supposed to lead you to the exit. It it works, I think, but they do break and split off, but I don't know. If you want to give it a shot, it's better than nothing. It led me straight to it this time, but it doesn't always work. If you watched my last video, you'll know that the Vile Pyramid, the entrance and exit, spawn sort of diagonally opposite each other. I don't think I mentioned it in the last video, but this is true for the Temple of Decay, because these are actually the same area, but in the future. So if you go to the corner, you should find the exit. As you can see, here's the entrance, and then directly opposite it is the exit. So this is going to be true in this area for all sections. Oh no, you're in the Temple of Decay and you want to cross this bridge, but it has collapsed. Whatever shall you do? You can just flame dash across or throw a smoke mine. So we're in Act 8, the Solaris Temple Level 1. There's actually quite a few objectives in this area, so you need to obviously make it to Solaris Level 2, but what happens if you find the exit to the Solaris Concourse first? Well, if that happens, you're going to drop a portal here, then continue your way through the Solaris Concourse until you find the waypoint, then you're going to take your portal back here. Alternatively, what you can do if you find, let's say, the level 2 Solaris first. I like to drop a portal here, backtrack a bit, find the waypoint, then go to town, take the portal through the Solaris temple. I really like portal drops. Some people think they're overrated, but definitely, especially in this area where there's a lot of targets that you have to hit, you have to get the exit to the Solaris concourse, you have to get the waypoint, you have to get level 2. Using a portal drop in this area is super duper. So I don't have a ton to report in Act 9, but something that's really important to note is that the Blood Aqueduct is a great place to level. You also find Humility cards here, which are used to farm Tabula Rasa. Very important early on in League. However, I would not recommend spending hours and hours in the Blood Aqueducts farming up Tabula. Rather, get to maps, farm in there, and then just buy the cards. Generally, I find that's much more efficient. One thing I will also add, the Blood Aqueducts, this is where you start finding items that you can use in the Chaos Recipe. So make sure to pick up chess pieces, boots, everything, and then I'm going to show you something that if you don't know is about to blow your mind. I'm serious. If you haven't seen this, you're going to see it, and even though I'm hyping it up, you're still going to be amazed by this. So are you ready? I'm about to show you. Someone on Reddit figured this out. They're a genius. Here we go. If you have a quad tab, you can organize it like this. 
So if you put some either scrolls or shards or anything and divide it up like this, let's say we have some belts, body armor, I don't know, let's see. I'm just gonna control click this, let's see where it goes. Hey, it went straight there. Body armor? It went straight there. Wands? It goes straight there. It doesn't randomly get all shuffled around. So if you can organize it like this, so you've got an empty row of four, then you put down four things, leave four gaps, leave a line of scrolls or whatever. Just look at this and copy it. This is so good. It's so good. There's also tools that you can use for the chaos recipe, but I don't know. I like doing it this way. Hey everyone, Future Local here. While I was editing this, I realized that I missed a couple of things, so I wanna add them here quickly. First thing, you can do two chaos recipes per inventory if you organize it properly. So instead of going one at a time, just randomly selecting items, you do it two at a time by going from in this stash tab, right to left. So you go body armor, weapon, weapon, helmet, boot, glove, then heavy belt. Then you can do it again, body armor, weapon, weapon, glove, helmet, boot, belt, and then you go into your jewelry tab, which should be separated, and you go four rings and two amulets. And then if you go to Navali or any other vendor and sell from left to right, so you go body armor, blah, 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 like this. Sell, sell, sell. Put in belts last and then jewelry after that, you will see you get four chaos orbs per turn in. So this is a much better way of doing it than one at a time. One other thing that I want to mention, I spoke about a tool that people use, I believe it's called Chaos Recipe Enhancer. I'm going to link a video in the description below from Path of Math where he goes through how it works. Essentially what it does is it will highlight items in your stash. So it'll, let's say, I don't know, you push a button and it'll highlight like a full set of Chaos Recipe items. And then you click them in a specific order, it shows you which order to click them in and then you pull it into here and then you go and sell it. Also, one thing that it does, which is amazing, is that it's got a sort of dynamic loot filter. So as you go through and fill up your tab, it'll start changing your loot filter to say, show more helmets or show more body armor. And then you don't have to kind of search for those while you're doing it. So it's a really powerful tool that I don't use. I don't know why. I, I kind of hate the chaos recipe if I'm being honest. So check out his video as well as Tien's video. I believe I'll link it in the description below. I think he was the first guy to crack this geniusness. Check that out. That's going to be it for this video. If you liked it, a thumbs up and a subscribe are very much greatly appreciated. I was also thinking of recording some reactions to the 313 teaser stuff. I recorded my response to the Atlas passive tree, which are absolutely mind blowing. They're so cool. And about 10 minutes into editing it, I figured, you know what, there's enough people doing this sort of stuff. It's a niche that's being filled. I don't want to dilute my own content by doing stuff like that. But if that's something you want to see from me, let me know and I could do it. It's an easy way to produce videos because they don't take very long to record or edit. And if you want to see that, that'd be cool. But otherwise, if not, that's totally cool. And I'll catch you in the next video. I'm super excited for 313 and I will try my best to continually update and make videos as I go. But I might go quiet for a little bit while I'm engaging with it. So until then, have a wonderful day and take care. Bye.